try? Yes, wow. This is gonna be a red letter day because it worked on the first try. Hey, speaking of red letters, your warm up was to download chapter 6.4. See how that segue worked? It wasn't even planned. Um, yeah. And just officially for all you YouTubers out there, happy belated birthday to Caitlin A. We won't say her last name, but we do broadcast live from New Braunfels, which is about 45 miles south of Austin. All right. Anyway, chapter 6.4. This is the last chapter, that uh, section that we're going to cover before we test. And again, our test will be not next week, but like the week after that, uh, after AP exams are over. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah. So we'll slow play it once we get through here. Uh, all next week, it's just practice, 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 so that you all will be experts, okay? Trig, trig identities and trig proofs are a lot of fun because they're not linear solutions. There's a little bit of creativity involved getting to your answer, and they require you to think. And remember, that is the sole purpose, really, of mathematical education because you're probably not going to be using double angle identities when you're trying to pick out which can of Bush's beans to buy. My gosh, easy there, Bush's beans. Got all kinds of flavors and sizes. I don't know. I just usually get the ranch style. Okay, I grew up eating those because they were the cheapest. Yeah, okay, and let's not go down that rabbit hole. The first new set of identities is a direct consequence of the sum composite identities. And I kind of alluded to this in our last lesson. These are called the double angle identities. And for some reason, these show up all the freaking time in calculus. And every time they do, I ask the calculus students, what is sine of 2x equal to? And they're like, 2 sine of x? I don't know. And I'm like, no, it's equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And they're like, oh, OK. Every time, every time. And then I'm like, what is cosine of 2x equal to? And they're like, I don't know. And then every time, I'm like, it's cosine squared minus sine squared. Every single time. So for some reason, these are just like on the fringes of people's mind, like right there on the border between what they can remember and what not, rem not to remember. So I, I, I beseech you to memorize these really, really well, uh, especially if you're going on to calculus next year. All right, so sine of 2x is 2 sine of x cosine x. Now what that allows us to do is to express an angle that is big, twice as big in this case, as a single angle, okay, that is half as big. We can express it in terms of single x. So notice it's one term. It's almost like we're bringing the two out front, almost, right? Almost, and then adding a cosine x, right? So two sine of one x times cosine x. Now, cosine of two x has three different versions. You don't have to memorize these other two. If you have room in your hard drive, you know, feel free to memorize them, but they're really easy to get. The one you want to memorize is the one that looks like the fake Papa Pid, right? The Elvis impersonator, if you will. It's cosine squared minus sine squared. It's not sine squared minus cosine squared. It's an alphabetical order. That should help you remember, right? C comes before S in the alphabet song, which I guess also then the alphabet. Um, and so cosine comes before sine. Cosine squared minus sine squared. Now notice that is two terms. Okay, where the sine double angle is one term. This comes into two terms, but again, it does the same thing. It allows us to express a double angle in terms of an angle that's half the size. Now, the other two you can real easily obtain if you need them. They're kind of nifty when you're doing proofs because they allow you to express it not just in terms of a single angle, but exclusively in terms of cosine or exclusively in terms of sine, okay, which is kind of nice. But we could do that anyway. For instance, if I wanted to take this one that's fake Papa Pid and put it in terms of sine squared, I could just put parentheses around cosine squared and replace that with what from Papa Pid's identity? One minus sine squared, right? All of Papa Pid. And now I combine like terms. What's one minus sine squared minus sine squared? One minus two sine squared. And equivalently, you could do the same thing with sine squared. Just put parentheses around it call it one minus cosine squared and distribute the negative and you'll get the middle one. So if you memorize the top one, you can get the other two by using Papa Pid. All right. So again, you don't really necessarily have to memorize those, but the ones that I'll highlight, 
you do, all right? So next year when you're in calculus and I say, what is sine of 2x? You're all going to be like, 2 sine x, cosine x. And I'm going to say, what's cosine of 2x? And you're going to be like, which one? And I'm going to be like, ah, oh, touche, right? Um, so please memorize those. They're pretty handy. They come in uh, quite a bit. Now, the tangent of 2x, you know, you're, you're, you're welcome to use it. Uh, again, we can express it using the ratio identity, sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. Or you can express it exclusively in terms of tangent. 2 tangent over 1 minus tangent squared, okay? So memorize, you know the sine of a cosine one, you want to memorize this one as well, those two versions, okay? Now, let's, let's prove it. Let's prove the double angle identity, okay? We'll prove the middle one for cosine. So let's prove that cosine of 2x equals that. Oops, I got a broken line. My sound effects were good, though. There we go. On which side should we start, left or right? Do you remember our new rule for which side to start on? We got to get the angles the same, so we start on the side that has a different angle or a bigger angle. So even though there's more terms on the right, notice the angle on the left is 2x. That's a bigger angle. And it's easier to tear down than build up, including angles. Okay, So we need to first and foremost get the angles the same in every proof. Okay, That's priority number one. Get the angles the same. So how can I express 2x, if I start on the left, in terms of single x on the right? Hmm. Well, you can remember your um, double angle identity, right? Which is cosine squared minus sine squared. And just like we were kind of alluding to up above, now you have single angles. <clears throat> you can put parentheses around the sine squared. And on the next line, you can replace that with 1 minus cosine squared all up up a pid. <clears throat> and now if we distribute cosine squared of x minus 1, and that becomes plus cosine squared of x. And now all you got to do is add like terms. 1 cosine squared plus another cosine squared makes 2 cosine squareds. And then we got minus 1. And there it is. That's the proof. I'll get it. This is Corpy. Yes. No problem. I sure do. Yes. 408. Okay. I will send her. Uh huh. Amanda Rogers. 408. Room 408. You have to make up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's Amanda R. 408 for, for the test that you missed yesterday. AP but kudos to you for putting AP before the EOC, right? Because mm -hmm. in your mind, that's more important. Easiest, easiest, right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you'll be done in an hour. Uh, okay. okay. Have a good time. What room did I tell you? 408? 408. 408. 408. 408. Like the cleaner, 409, but minus one. Okay. Okay. All right. They found her. Oh, okay. Now. Let's, um, let's, let's back it up a little bit here. You could certainly do it this way because I want you to memorize the double angle identities. But let's look to see, oops, whoopsie. Let's look to see why cosine of 2x even equals cosine squared minus sine. Ah, crap it. Let's just come over here. Let's, let's show that cosine, ah, I'm all flustered now from the phone call. I can't remember what I was doing. Oh, there it is. Let's prove this, okay? Let's prove that. I want to prove the main identity. Um, so, as I mentioned in the beginning, these are direct consequences of your composite identity. So, if we want to prove this, all we have to do is write 2x as x plus x, right? Using the composite identity, we can now expand it. Selfish cosine, so it's cosine, cosine, cosine of the first. Cosine of the second, and we change the sign, sine of the first times sine of the second. And of course, because the angles are the same, this is now cosine squared 
minus sine squared. And that's it, done. Okay. So um, that's it. You could do something very, very, very similar uh, for the double angled identity for sine of 2x. You can call it sine of x plus x, use the sine identity, and instead of squaring, you'll have like terms that can then combine to become double, okay? So I'm not going to prove that. I'll leave that, as they say, as an exercise for you to do in the privacy of your own home. Make sure you lock the door. Okay. What? No, just, come on, not first. I'm doing trick proofs. <laughs> Ah, uh, good thing I'm the only one drinking this coffee now because it has my backwash in a little bit. Mmm. All right. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, go ahead. I'll let you copy that down. All right. I forget that I'm recording sometimes. All right. Everyone has that? Mm. I mean, you got to take it seriously, right? No interruptions. It's my private time. There's a, here, it's, there's a legendary story, an apocryphal story, about uh, the late, great Leonard Euler, who had a great sense of humor. He had like 52 children. I exaggerate a little bit. Maybe it was only 50. Um, but he was, he was actually more prolific in math than he was at siring offspring, which that's pretty good, right? But anyway, um, he was downstairs in his study working a math problem, and his wife was upstairs on her deathbed, you know, near the end. And she was surrounded by friends and families and loved ones and, and pastors. But Euler was downstairs doing math, and she was getting really near to the end. So she sent the pastor down to call, call Euler up there so he could be with her in her final breath moments and he came down and he says mr euler your wife is upstairs her last breath draws near um she would like for you to come and he says he says to the guy he says can you please ask her to wait and and so that's the ha ha right so you know he's he's busy he's working so same thing like knock before you come in you're, you're breaking you're breaking my mojo here i've got something going on here it's me it's me and this, and I'm working, and I don't want to be interrupted for no reason, okay? No reason at all. I mean, what do I have to do? Put a sock on the door, you know, to let you know what? Don't interrupt me, all right? So anyway, uh, I don't know if Euler made it up there in time, but uh, again, that's an apocryphal story. Okay. Yeah, what a guy, what a guy. It actually, I don't know if it was Euler. It might have been Gauss. Sometimes I get my... Uh, my humorous mathematicians confused. Um, but anyway, Euler did have about 50 children. If you want to look that up, you can Google it, right? How many children did Euler have? Oh, no. How do you get Siri on here? Siri? Siri? Can you hear me? Okay, Google. Can you hear me? How many? Oh, I need spaces? Okay. How many children? What do you think it's going to be? Did who comes up? Queen Victoria. Nope. Nice try. Five? Whatever. Yeah, E U L E R. How many children did Euler have? Five. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not right. Uh, no, you see, that's not right. He did not have five children. That is not right. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's not right. Um, hang on. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. Of their 13 children. Oh, okay. Only five survived. Okay, so he had 13 children. 13 children. But only five survived because he was too busy doing math, and they went outside, and they played around the ditch and the river and the snakes. You know, he wasn't there to be a parent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, one other thing. I got to get this right. Okay, which mathematician 
that's a long word, mathematician, okay, uh, said, please ask her to wait, okay? Uh, let's see if that even shows up. Um, math jokes. Well, that's not right. The story behind Connecticut Deli math. Oh, it was Gauss. It was Gauss. Okay, good, good. See, so my apologies, Euler. It was Gauss. Gauss was the prick. Euler was the uh, Euler was the sire. Okay. Um, now Euler is the one that he did go blind in his eye from working so hard at math in dimly lit uh, areas. Um, and they asked him, "What, what are you going to do now, Euler? Now that you're blind in one eye?" And uh, he said, "That's okay. I'll be less distracted now, right? Because you know, one less eye to look at stuff. That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny." And it turns out that he was, he was actually more prolific um, after he lost sight in one of his eyes. He, he published more uh, original works after he went blind in one eye than before. So he was true to his word, okay? But Gauss, Gauss was, Gauss was, um, well, Gauss was, he, he knew he was smart. Let's just say that. Gauss knew he was smart, okay? And he was. Okay, anyway, um, we got our story straight now. And we prove the double angle identity. So, any comments or questions? Y'all have any good mathematician jokes or mathematician stories? Okay. You know the one about Archimedes, though, running naked through the streets of Syracuse, Greece, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Yelling what? No. I don't know. Yelling Eureka. Eureka. Right, good. Eureka, which in Greek meant, or was it Latin? No, it was Greek. I have found it. I have found it. That's what Eureka means. So, they used that phrase, too, when they struck gold in 1849. Right, Eureka! Right, and then the gold rush. That means I have found it. Okay, so quick story again. Yeah. Let's do one more problem, and then I'll tell you the story. All right, cosine. Uh, oh, example two. If cosine of x is negative two thirds, and sine of x is greater than zero, I smell a two's clues problem coming on. <coughs> Sorry, uh, what's the what's the noise that blue makes? <coughs> That's two's clues, right? Find cosine of 2x, sine of 2x, and tangent of 2x. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do what we know to do. Let's see which quadrant x it lives in. First of all, if cosine is negative, that puts it into which two quadrants? Two and three. Excelente. And if sine is positive, that puts it in which two quadrants? One and two. And what's the overlapping shaded quadrant? Two. So I'm going to draw a generic terminal ray in quadrant two and call that angle X. So that y'all are good at that now, right? And then we'll drop a perp from somewhere along the terminal ray. Drop a perp. Boom. Okay. And now we'll label the two sides. Cosine is X. So this is negative two and positive three. Remember, signs matter. These are really vectors. So let's get the fourth side by using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So uh, we know, we'll call that y temporarily. We know that y squared plus negative two quantity squared equals three squared. So y squared must equal nine minus four because that becomes positive four. So y equals plus or minus the square root of five. So remember x and y can be positive or negative, but the radius r, the hypotenuse is always positive. Which one do we want here, the positive or the negative root? Positive, because it is in quadrant two where y is positive. Yeah, had this been in quadrant three or four, we would have chosen the negative square root of five. Okay, cool. So now that we have all three sides of our right triangle, we really have all six trig ratios for the angle x, yes? But I want to figure out what cosine is of an angle now that's twice as big as x. Wow. What quadrant might that angle live in? It could live in the fourth, or it could also live in the third. If you have an angle that's twice as big as X, it could be twice as big as 90, a little bit bigger than that, which would be a little bit bigger than 180. So it could put it over here in quadrant uh, three. Or if it's closer to 180, 180 doubled is 360, it could live in quadrant four. Okay. Now, I don't know, unless I find the angle intuitively, if it's going to live in quadrant three or four. But I know an angle twice as big is going to live in one of those. So here's where the identities are pretty handy. I know all the trig functions for x. 
If I can express 2x in terms of single x, I've got it. Well, do we know that? Yes. So let's go ahead and say cosine of 2x underneath there is equal to what? Cosine louder, I guess. Let's use the double angle, uh, double angle identity for cosine. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, good. Cheap Elvis impersonator, right? Pop a pit impersonator. So remember that when we write cosine squared with the square between the s and the x and the sine squared between the n and the x, we're really talking about the entire ratio squared. So this is the expanded version, which is more useful for using it. Now let's go ahead and plug in. What is the cosine value of our x? Well, that was given to be negative 2 thirds. So we got that. Minus, what's the sine value now? From over here, what's the sine of x? Square root of 5 over 3. Good, square root of 5 over 3. And then we'll square that ratio. Okay, and now all we're going to do is simplify. Negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds is positive 4 ninths. Minus the square root of 5 thirds times the square root of 5 thirds is 5 ninths. And so if I subtract, I get 4 minus 5. That's negative 1 ninth. Okay. So what does that tell me about 2x, the angle that's twice as big? It lives in which quadrant? Is that enough evidence to determine the quadrant in which 2x lives? We said it could either live in quadrant 3 or 4, right? Depending if it was closer to 90 or closer to 180. If I get a negative cosine ratio for that angle, it's got to be in which quadrant? 3. Very good. Because in quadrant 4, cosine is positive, yes? So whatever the angle is, I know it lives in quadrant 3. That's nice. I'm glad I know that. Okay? Let's go ahead then and, um, oh my gosh, I just noticed something. I shaded two things separately, but notice this. The shape of this shading is this, and the shape of this shading is this. And it almost looks like one of them is just the dilation of the other. Man, I'm really consistent with my shading strokes. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. All right, uh, you go ahead now, you go, and uh, go ahead and figure out what sine of 2x is. Sine of 2x should be what, positive or negative? If we're in quadrant 3, it should be negative. And then tangent of 2x, now that we know that 2x lives in quadrant 3, should be what, positive or negative? Positive. All right, you go. Okay, I'll go ahead and write the identities for you. Sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And tangent of 2x is 2 tangent of x. And remember, we get that from the composite identity. It's tangent of x plus tangent of x, which is 2 tangent of x, all over 1 minus tangent of x times tangent of x. That's tangent squared. So if you just remember that from the composite identity, you'll get those. Okay, go ahead and plug those in and see if you get a negative and a positive number. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll, we'll tell the Archimedes story. I can't believe y'all don't know that story. Some of y'all do. Yeah, yeah, some of y'all do.
Now from here, since we've already written the identity, all we got to do is pull this ratio and this ratio off of our triangle. We don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Once we, once we go from a 2x angle to writing it in terms of single x, now we get the tangent sine and cosine of x from our reference triangle that we've already drawn and labeled. We just pull those values right off the triangle like we did right here. But see how you did here. Sine of 2x is 2 times sine of 1x times cosine of 1x. So 2 is 2, right? So now we just need to pull the sine and the cosine ratio off from here. So sine is square root of 5 over 3. So we'll just plug that in right there. And the cosine, of course, was given its negative 2 thirds. And now all we got to do is multiply straight across. So that 2 in front is really like over 1. So this becomes negative 4 square root of 5 over 9. And that's about as simplified as that one gets. It is a negative number, though, just as we anticipated, right? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So tangent now, you can, first of all, you can remember tangent of 2x. Just remember this. We'll kind of do like a mini proof over here to help you remember this one. 2x is really x plus x. So if we use the tangent composite identity, which remember you already have memorized, remember wink, wink, it's like you're distributing. So tangent of the first, tangent of the second, over 1 minus change the sign, the product of the two that are up there. Well, it just so happens we're in the same angle. Tangent of x plus tangent of x is 2 tangent of x. And on the bottom, 1 minus tangent times tangent is tangent squared. So again, you don't have to really memorize anything new. Just kind of realize where it comes from or how we get it. All right, so now we can just kind of plug in. It's 2 times. What's the tangent value over here? Well, that's y over x. That's square root of 5 over negative 2. Mm -hmm. Square root of 5 over negative 2 all over 1 minus the square root of 5 over negative 2 squared. And now all we got to do is simplify. Well, OMG, right? Look what happens in the numerator. This 2 and that 2 divide out, and we're left with negative square root of 5 in the top. And in the bottom we get 1 minus, and here we got to be careful. What is the square root of 5 over negative 2 quantity squared? Positive. 5 over 4. Square root of 5 squared is 5. Negative 2 quantity squared is negative 2 times negative 2. It's positive 4. Do we want to leave our answer like that? No. So you can either combine 1 minus 5 fourth first, or just realize that you can multiply by 4 over 4 to get rid of the complex fraction. Now, in the top, we get minus 4 square root of 5. Common error alert here. This was happening on our uh, tangent composite problem the other day. In the bottom, we have two terms. So you have to distribute the 4 to both terms. A lot of people are not taking that 4 and taking it to the first term of 1. So that gives us 4 minus 5. And then, of course, we get negative 4 square root of fifths over negative 1. And now... A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we get 4 square root of 5. Were we anticipating that to be a positive angle? Yeah, we were. This is why we spent so much time in the beginning of the year working with exponents and stuff like that. This type of complex fraction, just algebraic manipulation of expressions, very, very important to be able to do. Now, let's see if there's another way to do it. Remember, it's also sine of dos equis over cosine of dos equis. 
Stay messy, my friends. That was horrible. Why did I even say that? Um, we already have the sign of Dos Equis and the cosine of Dos Equis, don't we? We found them already. So let's just see if we can plug them in. Negative 4 square root of 5 all over 9. All over negative 1 over 9. Well, here, if you multiply by 9 over 9, same thing as state change flipping. First of all, negative over negative is positive. We get the 9s dividing out in the top to give us 4 square root of 5. And at the bottom, we get the 9s dividing out to give us 1. Oh, boy, we get the answer a little more quickly. But that's because we've already done the hard work for sine and cosine. But it's cool that we get the same answer, isn't it? Keep your hand down if you think that's cool. Zach's the only one who doesn't. Okay. And it was a double vote for him. No way. All right. Awkward timing. I know. I know he thinks it's cool. Not story time yet. Just because we got the same answer doing it two different ways, how do we know that that's the right answer? Can we trust this method, or is this just witchcraft? Huh. Let's see. Let's review how to actually find the angle X with the calculator. If you want to grab one, you can. You want to rush up to the shoe racks, or you can just kind of follow along with what I'm doing. It's up to you. But um, let's go to the calculator, dude. Uh, where is that? Where? Come on, calculator. Where are you? Oh, you're right there. There you are. Look at that. We did that yesterday in class. That's something to look forward to for next year, guys. Flush. Okay. Let's go to degree mode, just because I think it's a little bit easier. Degree mode. We can appreciate the, the, the degrees a little bit better. Um, when I was a skateboarder, I used to say, man, I just pulled off a four pie the other day. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Like it was a 720. Oh, okay. I was the nerdy math guy. Skater boy. That was horrible and didn't have pads or a helmet. So that's why I'm in the bad shape I am today. So the moral of that story is do your math homework and don't vape. Okay? Um, all I need to find the angle X is one of the trig functions. Okay? I really have all six if I wanted. And I've lost connectivity now. There's my hallway playlist. All right, so which, which one do we want? Let's use the cosine since they gave it to us, huh? So let's take the inverse cosine, second cosine, inverse cosine of our angle negative two-thirds, negative two-thirds. Everyone with me? Okay. And based upon our PVR lesson, this should give me what type of angle? Positive, acute, negative, acute, or positive, obtuse? What's the PVR of our cosine on the horizon? One and two. And which quadrant is cosine negative? Two. So it should give me a positive obtuse angle. Come on, calculator. Boom. Is that the one we want? It is, because our original angle was in quadrant two. If you would have taken the inverse sine, uh, you would have had a negative acute angle. You would then find the reference angle and subtract it from 180. So. That's our angle. Um, I want to double that now. So how do I double that angle? Times 2. Oh, yeah, that was good. So there it is, 263. What quadrant does that live in? Quadrant. Well, remember, 270 is 3 quarters of the way down to 3 pi halves. So that's quadrant 3. That lives exactly where we expected it based upon our cosine of double angle being negative 1 ninth. I'm going to store this value, store it as, I'll just store it as x. Okay, now let's go ahead and take the cosine of 2x. Cosine of 2x, it should give us negative 1 ninth. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammies. Yeah! Is that negative 1 ninth? Let's see, math, enter, enter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What's negative 1 divided by 9? Uh-oh. What happened? Did we do something wrong? This is embarrassing. Too many whammies? Cosine. What did I do wrong? Did I still? What is it? Okay, hang on. Y'all have to help me troubleshoot now. That's 263, right? 
Is that what we said our angle is? Okay. Did I? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Now I feel bad. Um, it should have been negative one ninth. What did we do wrong? Anyone? Four ninths minus five ninths from negative one. It should have been negative one ninth. Let's try it again. Try it again. Come on, calculator. Do your thing. This. Oh, I'm a freaking idiot. I'm typing in 2x. I got it. I've already doubled my angle, haven't I? Yeah. X is the double angle. Stupid me. I was doubling it again. This should give us negative point one 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 right? Okay. Oh, we've restored order to the universe. Okay. I've already doubled it. Okay. Sine of my double angle X should give us negative four root five over nine. Well, that's not going to convert. So if we just say negative uh, four times root five um, divided by nine, it should give us that equivalent decimal. Okay. And we're running out of time, but you could do the same thing for the tangent. So whenever something doesn't work out, Y'all need to have the persistence and the tenacity to troubleshoot your own work and say, okay, I have cognitive dissonance right now. I'm not just going to play Candy Crush or do something to get my mind off of it. You need to stick with the problem and tell, tell the other person to wait. I've, I've got my mind wrapped around this. Tell, tell my wife to wait. I'll be there when I'm done. Uh, knock before you come in. Stick with it. Don't break your concentration. Uh, don't give up too easily because... Nothing worth having uh, really comes easily. And you always value the, the things that took more effort. You value them a lot more, okay? Which includes your personal growth and your mathematical knowledge. You do have to work for it, right? Okay, um, that's it. We're, we're kind of done for the day. Uh, I'll have to tell you the Archimedes story tomorrow. But that is a reason to bring you back, right? Yeah. Okay.